Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my eighth update for my Panthos Eyeshadows Project Pan. If you're not familiar with this Project Pan, it is an eyeshadow centric project where you focus on randomly selected eyeshadows from your collection. Everybody has different ways that they approach that, whether they randomly select the palette or randomly select the actual individual shadows. However they choose to do it, everybody is just working on a selection of eyeshadows with the goal of hitting pan on shadows from their collection. And be prepared, if you're not familiar with this project, to become obsessed with it because I cannot resist seeing or watching a pan those eyeshadows video whenever I see it come up in my YouTube subscription or scrolling through people's posts on Instagram when I see a pan those eyeshadows update come up. It is so addictive to see people working on eyeshadows. I really, I don't know why, maybe it is in part because I'm working on this project, but I think it's just so fun to see eyeshadow palettes getting used and getting loved. I, I don't know why I really enjoy it, but if you're here, if you happen to stumble upon this video and you've never seen one of these videos in the past, you definitely might be interested in binge watching the same kind of content as this video. So I will have a list of all different channels and their playlists for their Pan Those Eyeshadows videos that I recommend down in the description box. Of course, there's so many more channels than those ones that I recommend, but these are just a handful of people that I see consistently uploading and I love watching their updates. And we have my friend Alexi to thank for the entire concept behind Pan Those Eyeshadows. She's the one that started doing this project back a couple years ago. She hasn't been doing it recently, but she really is the person that super inspired me to want to not only pan my eyeshadows, but to create more interesting, intricate, colorful looks from my eyeshadows that I do own and in part pulling randomly selected colors definitely pulls me out of my comfort zone and makes me create those looks. But every time she uploads a video, she has the most impeccable makeup looks on and I just am constantly inspired by Alexi. So definitely go on over and give her a subscription if you haven't already. And be sure to congratulate her on the new house. She just bought a beautiful home that she's moving into right now. That's why she hasn't been uploading very frequently this summer, but huge congrats to Alexi. And oh my gosh, in just a very short while, her and I will be starting another round of roulette pan collabs. So, ha, huh, so many exciting things going on. But in any case, let's hop on into the progress that I've made over these eyeshadows or on these eyeshadows over the last month. I do have a very exciting update for you guys, so let's hop on into it. So how about we kick off this update with this bad boy right here. This is the AVH Norvina Volume 1 palette. This is a massive colorful palette and I've been focusing on this for five months now. The shade that I've been working on is this guy right here and I think you can tell from there. I did hit pan on it this past month. This shade is called D1 which is a matte yellow shade and it only took me one use this month to hit pan on it. So I don't have any pictures to share with you guys of looks that I created because I didn't touch this after that one use because I had to use it 31 times in this project pan, including using it as like a draping highlight blush kind of thing three times and then 31 eye looks created with this. So. That was a lot of times to use this yellow. As much as I love yellows, I definitely was feeling burnt out with it by the end of trying to focus on it, but I'm super happy I hit my goal after 31 uses, and that means we will be rolling something new in its place. I'm so thrilled about that. I'm so happy that I finally, finally hit pan on it because that's been lingering for many a months in this project. Next shade I've been focusing on comes from this palette right here. This is the Juvia's Place, the Zulu palette. And the shade that I'm working on in this palette is the matte orange, which is the first shade in the palette. They don't have any names, so I just call it shade one. It is this one right here. And unfortunately, I have not yet hit pan on it, but I think you can tell, even from all the way back there, there's a serious dip happening in here. I used this six additional times this month. Usually what I would do is I would apply it all over my lid and up into my crease and kind of just diffuse it everywhere, all over my lash line, everything like that. And then I would use this kind of as like a, almost like a starter shade to a look, any warm toned looks. Then I would go in with 
browns or bronzes or whatever I wanted, but this would kind of just be a starter shade. And I used it, like I said, six times this month, totaling 19 uses over this project pan. And it has now been in this project for three full months, but I'm gonna keep working on it because I know I'm super close. I know I will have pan on this by my next update. I'm definitely not disappointed I haven't yet hit pan on it. I know that pan will come for next update. And in fact, I'm just loving seeing this palette look even more loved than it has ever before because I've just been reaching for it so much now that I'm focusing on it. But there definitely will be pan in that orange by next update. I just, I know it. I, it's gonna happen. It's definitely gonna happen. The next shade I've been focusing on comes from this palette right here, another Juvia's Place palette. This is the Magic Mini by Juvia's. One of my newer palettes to my collection, but I'm so happy that I've been giving myself the opportunity to play with it through this project pan. And the shade that I've been focusing on is this one right here. I hope you can tell from there. I know you can tell from there, actually. There is a nice, decent sized pan in this shade right here. And this shade is called Oshun. I hope I am pronouncing that correctly now. I do apologize. I have been pronouncing it incorrectly in all of my updates up until this point. This is called Oshun. She's an African goddess. One of my subscribers did comment that on my most recent update and let me know that that is how you pronounce her name. And I think that's just so special. The, like I love that aspect about Juvia's Place that there is such an importance on African heritage to the naming and to the artistry, everything related to the brand. So thank you so much for your insight. I really do appreciate it and I do apologize. I was pronouncing it incorrectly. But in any case, let's just talk about my experience with this eyeshadow. I did use it five times over this past month, which isn't that many additional uses, but the fifth time that I did reach for this palette, I actually used it as a nail polish. If you're not familiar with how to do that, I do have a video on my channel. It's such an easy technique, but it's super easy to use your eyeshadow as a nail polish color and that's what I did with it in my last use. That's how I was able to hit pan on it and to actually expand the pan pretty well in that single, in that last use of it. I didn't absolutely love this shade on my eyes ever, but I did use it a total of 17 times throughout this project pan. That last time I did use the most product in using it as a nail polish and I thought it was absolutely beautiful that way, but it didn't hold up that great on my nails. I do think it was probably because my top coat was pretty much at the bottom of the bottle. I think that was the issue, not the eyeshadow formula itself, but it was so stunning on the nails. I wore like a very light, pastel pink kind of shade below it and then this on top and it was so beautiful and so like shimmery and iridescent stunning stunning color on the nails and I'm so happy to have another pan in my collection and a pan in a newer palette to my collection as well and yeah, I was so happy to be reaching for this. I will definitely still be playing with this palette in the coming months, even if it doesn't get rolled into this project because I find this color scheme just so, so inspiring. My next focus shade came from this palette that I'm always just so embarrassed by. This is the Fenty Beauty Galaxy palette. I'm just so embarrassed by how perpetually nasty it looks on the exterior, but it is such a beautiful palette on the inside, so whatever. But the shade that I've been focusing on is this one right here called Milky Way. And as you can tell, I did hit pan on it this month. I used it an additional five times this past month, taking up my total up to 19 uses through this project pan. This is such a stunning, like shimmery, beige, silver gold kind of color. Does that make sense as a descriptor? I don't know, but it has so many amazing reflex running through it, very fine shimmers, but it's like mainly green and kind of like an aqua kind of color with hits of red and pink throughout it. It's very, very dynamic. Such a beautiful shade. I used it so many different ways throughout this project pan. I'm so proud to see a third pan in this palette. It makes me so happy and so excited to see this palette getting really well loved by me. Of course, as a whole, the palette doesn't really look that massively touched. Like there's a lot of shades that barely have any sort of dent on them, but Either way, I'm really happy to have three pans in this palette now, and it's all thanks to this project pan. And lastly, we have my Urban Decay Electric palette. I've been focusing on this palette now for just two months, and I've been working on a shade called Gonzo, which is that bright, 
bright like cyan blue kind of shade. I used it six times this month. Today I actually did use it, but you cannot see it in this look. I actually just used it to kind of like map out the shape of my graphic shadow. And I consider that a use because it is what I placed on my lids in order to create this shape because this is kind of a bit of a dusty sort of formula. So I knew if, if need be, I could easily just brush it away and start to make any sort of adjustments to the shape. I thought that was just so much better than just going in and just creating this shape from nothing. So this was the sixth use of this shadow. Altogether, I have used it, I guess, 13 times. And I did say in my last update, I was gonna try to power through and use it for the full 15 uses. I've not yet done that. So I am gonna keep this in this project as much as it's only two uses. I'll keep it in this project for one more month and keep focusing on it. I probably will surpass the 15 use threshold with this shade, but that's okay because I've actually been really loving reaching for this palette. And through reaching for this palette over this past month, I did actually end up hitting pan in the shade Thrash. This was one of my focus shades in Pan Those Eyeshadows last year, and I had it in this project for absolutely forever. I wore it so, so much, and I never thought the day would come where I'd hit pan on it because these pans are super deep. But I'm really happy to report I did hit the tiniest little bit of pan in this. Now there's a ton of products still left in here that I will never finish up, but Thrash is such a beautiful shade, one of the most treasured shades in my collection, and I'm so happy to have finally hit pan on it. So even though I am never gonna try to hit pan on Gonzo, I am just going to roll it out after next update. I'm really, really happy that this, having this in this project did amount to me hitting pan on Thrash and just, I don't know, it feels like a big accomplishment even though that wasn't really the goal of this specific project. It still feels like a goal kind of hit. You know what I mean? I, I hope that's clear. But, oh my gosh, I just realized I never swatched one single of these eyeshadows, so why don't I just quickly swatch the shades that I'm rolling out on this hand, and then I will swatch the shades that are staying in this project for you here. My bad. So these are the three shades that will be rolling out of this project, this update, which I'm really, really stoked about. This first one right here is from the ABH Norvina Volume 1 palette, which is the shade D1. This next one is Oshun, which came from the Juvia's Place, the Magic Mini palette. And this final one right here is the Milky Way from the Fenty Beauty Galaxy palette. And these are the shades which will remain in this project for the next month. I think both of them will be rolling out next month, hopefully if I hit pan on this shade, which is the first shade in the Zulu palette by Juvia's Place. As long as I hit pan on it, then both of these will be rolling out. And this next one is Gonzo, which is from the Electric palette. As long as I can use it two more times, which I don't see being a problem at all, then this will also be rolling out next update, which is really, really exciting. So I am so excited to pull three additional shadows into this project because these three will be rolling out. I'm really excited. This is always the best part of these updates and I really did miss it last update when I didn't roll anything new into this project. I have 286 eligible eyeshadows to be pulled into this project pan, meaning 286 that either don't have pan or are a liquid shadow. So let's just, uh, let's just pull three shades from my 286 eligible shadows. The first one's gonna be number 112. Next up we have 160. And lastly, we have 191. So, so I'm just gonna go take a look at my Google spreadsheet and figure out what shades these numbers correspond to. And I'll be right back to share with you guys all of the new shadows that are making their way into this project. So I'm back with the three new additions to this project. The first one comes from my Sleek Eye Divine Storm palette. I wanna say Perfect Storm every time because I did work on the shade Perfect Storm in this palette previously, which is this one right here. I did have it in this project only a few months ago and I don't feel like it took me too, too long to hit pan on it. So I am excited to be working on this palette again. And the shade that I'm gonna be focusing on is this one right here, which is called um, Snowstorm. I almost forgot what it was called. It is a beautiful, like very pale champagne kind of shade. And if you caught my favorite shade in all of my palettes video, you know this is my favorite shade in this palette. I just think it's a beautiful brightening kind of shade. And it's a really good replacement for the Fenty Beauty Milky Way, which just rolled out of this project pan. So I am happy to be rolling it in. I don't have a ton of use on this shade, so I don't think that it will be something I roll out of this project immediately or like quickly 
but I do think this is the kind of shade I can integrate into many a look for the foreseeable future. So I am excited to be reaching into this and integrating this into more looks. And the next shadow comes from this palette right here. This is another one of those super grubby palettes, super embarrassing state palettes. But in any case, this is the Revolution Soap X Revolution Extra Spice palette. It's super reflective and super grubby. My apologies for that. But the shade that I selected or that was randomly selected for me from this palette is this one right dead center in the middle of the palette and it's the shade called 21. It is a vibrant red and I think I've maybe swatched this once. I don't know if I've ever put this on my eyes. So it's going to be, it's going to be a challenge. At least I'm getting this for the fall. So I think that that makes it a little bit more approachable and oh wow. It's not super pigmented and it actually is a little bit more like fuchsia hot pink than I was expecting. So that does make it different than I was anticipating. I just built it up definitely different than I was expecting the swatch to turn out. But in any case, I am excited to reach for this palette. I'm always excited to pull something new into this project, even if it's a shade that doesn't seem that great in swatching or it's something I'm not super familiar with. This project really does give me an opportunity to play with the eyeshadows that I draw and to learn new ways to play with them and to use them and to integrate them into looks. So 21, I feel like maybe a bit of a challenge for me. I have panned like bright reds in the past and they were really hard for me to work through because I didn't want to use them all the time. I can get very burnt out by these kinds of shades, but given the way that this looked in the swatch, much more like pinky, it might be something that's really fun to play like layering with and maybe to layer some duo chromes on top of. I don't know, but I'm excited to see how I can integrate it into some like fall looks over the coming months regardless. And the last shade comes from this. This palette loves to be in this freaking project pan. I don't know why, but anyways, I'm up for the challenge. And the shade that I selected is this one right here called Drift, which is like a purple gunmetal kind of shade. Let me swatch it. I can't remember really what it looks like because this is not one of the shades I'm drawn to in this palette. I don't really use it very frequently, but it definitely leans kind of purple, but I would consider it maybe like a, like a gray purple type of shade. It definitely is quite dynamic and definitely interesting. I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to utilize it. If it's something that I'll want to reach for frequently, I'm not so sure. I do think this shade is gonna to prove to be a bit of a challenge for me, but I have neglected this shade, so I am happy that it is something I'm bringing to the forefront and ensuring that I get a chance to not only reach for it, but to reach for my Born to Run even more. This palette is looking mighty loved, and I do think that in reaching for Drift more over this coming month, I can make this palette look even more loved in the next short while. So I am definitely excited about that, but I do think this will be a bit of a challenge. So let me know down in the comments, how would you pair these kinds of shades together? I definitely have a couple ideas in my mind. I'm thinking these two colors are beautiful together. Actually, these bottom three would be gorgeous together. That red and the orange would make a really great pairing. I don't know. I feel like this is always such a really inspiring thing to see a brand new color story pop up for this project pan. This project as a whole has really just pulled me out of my comfort zone. I don't think I have an eyeshadow color comfort zone anymore. I used to think that blues were like off the radar for me, but playing with Gonzo, I just feel like pretty confident in blues. I'm not super confident in my makeup application technique, but I'm super confident in color these days and I definitely have this project pan to thank for it after doing this project for the last like almost two years, a year and eight months at this point. I just feel like I can wear any color at all and I can play around with any color combination and I can make something happen out of it. So I'm really happy about that. That has been so much fun for me. But we gotta wrap this up. I feel like I'm getting kind of rambly here. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, I hope that you do consider subscribing. I have a loose goal in mind of hitting 10K by my birthday. That is kind of maybe a steep goal for me, 
but my birthday is at the end of November. It's November 19th, so like mid to end November, and it would be super special if I was able to hit 10K by then. So if you're not subscribed and you like what you see, definitely do hit that subscribe button. That would mean the absolute world to me. I'd love to have you here. But yeah, that is everything for today's video. Thank you so, so much for watching and for hanging out with me, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.